Hello, and welcome to Legal Cut Pro, the Canadian Entertainment Law Podcast. My name is Michelle Molyneux. And I'm Greg Pang. Today's podcast is an interview with Anne-Marie Murphy from Eastern Script. This podcast is brought to you by Ampia and its professional development team. Special thanks to Jane Toogood, our audio editor. You can find her on Instagram at JJ underscore two. That's double O good. Thank you, Michelle. I am very excited to have this episode as an interview with Anne-Marie Murphy. Um, and like with our previous interview with Elizabeth Glink, there are non-lawyer professionals who play very important roles for the legal side of a film or TV production. So someone like Anne-Marie Murphy and her company, Eastern Script, have the resources and the experience to provide key services such as script clearance reports and title reports, which then the production's lawyer would review for their client. And Anne-Marie Murphy is just uh, a wonderful person to know personally. Yeah, no, it was a lot of fun getting to meet her and learn about her work. It was very fascinating. All right, so we'll just get right into it. Hope you enjoy, everyone. Hi, this is Greg Peng with Legal Cut Pro, the entertainment law podcast. I am in Edmonton here with Michelle Molyneux from Vancouver and Anne-Marie Murphy in Kingston, Ontario for an interview. Welcome, Anne-Marie. Welcome to you. Nice to be here. And hi, Michelle. How are you there in the, on the West Coast? Hi, good, thanks. Good. Excellent. Well... Anne-Marie, I am going to read a little bit of a bio for you first, and then we'll just jump right into it. Okay. All right. So Anne-Marie, you are the owner and founder of Eastern Script, which is based in Kingston, Ontario. After completing an undergraduate degree, cum laude, cum laude means with praise. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Honors. With honors. honors. I guess strictly in Latin, it's, it's praise. Yes. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> With praise in English literature from Bowdoin College. And you worked at various film jobs in the film industry in both Boston and Los Angeles before completing a master's degree summa cum laude, which means with high praise. Is that right as well? Wicked, wicked good praise. Wicked good praise. Right? <laughs> at the UCLA Film School in Critical Studies. You opened Eastern Script in 1993. In doing that, you launched the first script clearance house existing outside of Los Angeles. You're a full member of the AIIP, which is the Association of Independent Information Professionals, for over 20 years. And you are a voting member of the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television. Overall, you have 30 years of varied experience in the entertainment industry. Wow, that are, those are quite some accolades, Anne-Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's all just a lot of hard work, really. Excellent. Well, hard work, and it's uh, it you know it looks like it's it's paying off. Uh, Eastern Script has been running for what was it uh, twenty uh, years now? No, more than twenty six years, years in <laughs> September. Yes, wow. I can count backwards, of course, nineteen ninety three. And uh, uh, why did you start Eastern Script, Anne Marie? Well, I had been doing this work at a company in Los Angeles. I got the job after I finished the master's degree at UCLA, and I really liked the work, but I didn't really like living in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So um, I was from New England originally. I'd, I'd moved from there to go to Los Angeles, where I lived for about five years, getting the degree and going to school. And then I decided after a while that I just didn't want to stay there anymore. And I decided to move back to the Northeast. Um, and yet, what would I do for my job? Because there I had found the perfect job for me and I couldn't take it with me. Um, so I decided to start my own company because I, I really loved the work. And I could see that there was a massive swath of North America that had to deal with the time zone difference going back and forth to Los Angeles for clearance reports. So that was how I sort of focused on that Eastern part, you know, catering to people, you know, three, sometimes four hours, different time zone, oh, wow. waiting for answers to come from Los Angeles. And that went on for years and years. It was really only Los Angeles for clearance reports from the 1950s until 1993 when I opened the company. So I saw, I saw a little niche that I could slide into. And I also, um, I opened it because I wanted to keep doing the work. It was a really good fit for my, my skill set. Oh, fantastic. I, I guess you're, you're a trailblazer in that sense because, well, you have some, uh, some competition now in Eastern Canada or uh, in the beyond Los Angeles now mm -hmm. for script clearance houses. Yes, so, there's but, another company in Ontario. There's a company in British Columbia, although that doesn't address the time zone difference for Eastern course. time zone people. And there are some 
one-off people here and there who do a bit of script clearance, but mainly as an add-on to their specialty, which is getting doing the negotiating for rights clearances. So, but I think we're we're certainly probably the biggest company that's providing this on this side of the country. And that and that being said, none of these clearance companies are big. You know, there there are a few people, or you know, five to ten people, or one person. So yes, I can't even remember what the original question was, but that's sort of no, that's fine. That's where I am. Uh, so Anne Marie, for listeners who might not be familiar with the terms, what are script clearance reports and title search reports? A script clearance report is a document that production needs typically in order to get errors and omissions insurance. So what happens is the person at the clearance company reads through the script and they make a list of all the story elements that might present a problem in a few different categories. Uh, Invasion of privacy is one of the main ones, Uh, trademark infringement, copyright infringement, defamation, a few other issues that don't come up as often, but those, those are the main four. So you, you read through the script and you make a list of all the story elements and you make sure that real people or real products or real businesses that exist that you may or may not be aware of aren't um, going to come after you because of the way you've used their name in the story. So there's a lot of trademark research. There's a lot of um, public records research looking through. You know, we go through the cast list to make sure we're not accidentally identifying real people. Say a character is a lawyer in a story set in Toronto. We're going to check for private individuals in the city who might have problems with their name being used. We're going to check for lawyers in the province. We're going to contact the professional law associations across North America. Maybe there's no lawyer in Toronto by that name, but maybe the name is the current name of the American Bar Association Mm -hmm. and the character is unsavory in some way. So we're going through and we're removing conflicts, whether you had intended to use a real name or not, we're looking to make sure that you're not going to come into any kind of problem. We come up with alternatives. If we find a problem, we're going to say, look, you know, here's what we found. Here's this person. This might be an issue. Here are some other names to use. So the clearance reports, they go through the cast list. We go through dialogue references, things that characters are saying about maybe prominent people, maybe unflattering comments about prominent people. The lawyers need to take a look at some of these things to figure out how much risk they want to assume in those categories. Shall I get into a title search then? And yes. what that consists of? Okay, so a title search is a different beast. That is where the research company looks at the title that you want to use and they look to see how else it's been used in other media, film, web series, television. What's the next section of the report? Trademark registrations that are related to media, mm-hmm. copyrights, publishing, plays, radio programming. We look at all these different things that exist and we look to see if your title is the same as any of the others. And then There's a very long report. We don't give you an opinion. We're just showing you what's out there. And then the lawyer for the production and sometimes the lawyer for the insurance company will decide, you know, I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this trademark registration that they found. And then you might have to come back to us for a different title. So those are different. They're not as much original research. They're going through, for us at least, they're not as changing each time. You know, we're like with a clearance report, we're looking up all kinds of new and weird things and dialogue references. With a title search, we're going through a set list of sources. So after you've got that, then you can decide, you know, how confident you are about the title that you've picked. So that's what those two things are. Okay, excellent. And with, with that, I noticed something on your website that, you know, as a uh, research services firm in the um, entertainment industry, you also do pre-merchandising character name searches as well. And this is, yes. as it sounds like, for merchandising purposes, if uh, yes. there, there are certain toys or, or stuffies or, or whatnot that are right. going to be sold as, as products that are ancillary to right. the film, then what, what do you do for pre-merchandising character name searches? Well, um, you mentioned the film, but typically that type of work is for series work. And oh. it's specifically for kids' animation. Mm-hmm. So... Think about the last time you went to a giant box store and walked into the toy section and you saw the many, many boxes of Paw Patrol merchandise (laughs) on the end caps there. So that's a series that we've worked on for quite a few years. And when we sort of evolved this 
this research product many years ago when we started getting a lot of animation clients. And so many of the bigger animation companies, they're not toy companies, but they're so intertwined, it's almost impossible to pull them apart. So when you have a series with, let's just say, a bunch of furry unicorns, and your idea is to launch a product line as well, well, you want to make sure at the scripted level that the names are okay to use. These um, names might not become products for a while, but after they've been used for 13 or 26 episodes, and then you launch the toy line, it's really way too late to change the name when right. you find out there's some trademark issues. So the, the type of research we do there is we look on the internet to see what's out there. I'll make up something crazy like our furry unicorn. His name is uh, Rainbow. Mm -hmm. So we're literally parked on the internet a few different search engines looking for the word rainbow and the word animated and the word character and the word mm -hmm. unicorn. We're looking for all different appearances on the internet of something that might be a problem. That could be, gee, we see a book series published by, you know, fill in the blank large book publisher mm -hmm. that features a unicorn named rainbow. And this series has 15 titles in it. It could be a book series. It could be a product line. It could be, some characters who existed in a Disney movie 10 or 15 years ago. So we're just doing a lot of this kind of very tedious, it's very time consuming research, looking to see what's out there. We look on the internet, we have a bunch of special animal character sources. We've got all kinds of resources for checking what animal names have been used in different products over the years. And then of course we finish up with some trademark searching. And that starts in class 28, which is the class for toys and mm -hmm. games. And then depending on the client, and many of our clients have sort of customized the trademark classes that they want, they might add another five or six um, trademark classes that involve things like backpacks, um, pencil boxes, sneakers, you know, stuff that kids would buy that they're going to want their furry unicorn character on. So that's what the merchandising, the pre merchandising research is. It's, it's really like trademark screening being done at the scripted level. Huh. That's, that's really, a long answer. No, no, that, <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's really, no, that's really, Fascinating. really right, perfect. So let's move along to our next question. What are some of the current challenges facing the, the world of clearances from your perspective, Anne-Marie? Yeah, I made a few notes about this one. I think um, our main challenge in the last couple of years has been the advent of web series. Mm. Not that they themselves are a problem, but there's so much work right now. We are having trouble keeping up with it. Oh. And yeah, and I think that there's also a level of, I'd say clients inexperience with the process who are attached to these series and they don't have expectations about the uh, amount of time involved in our work. And so the turnaround expectations are crazy. Like we'll get uh, someone asking us, you know, if we could get 30, 10 minute script reports to them, like, you know, within two days, like they don't really see the amount of work involved because they, some of them have literally never seen clearance reports before. Mm -hmm. So there's a new uh, flock of filmmakers who are um, real bootstrappers. And then when they get to the clearance process, they're having to run up against, you know, the, the slower wheels that turn the, the reports that take a while. So that's been a bit of a challenge for us. Also, this the we just mentioned about merchandising and animation projects. We're finding also that there's more and more of a demand for that, and we're being asked to do more and more trademark searching, which is something that we're trying to figure out what to do about because it's not really our forte. I mean, there are law firms that do nothing but trademark vetting and searching and research. Um, so we, that might be something that we're going to pull back on a little bit. Like we've got clients who come to us with existing stuff, and they have like extra trademark searches that they're wanting to bring to us too. So we're trying to figure out what our focus is right now, where there have been more demands put on us and pulling us in a few other directions. So that's been a bit of a challenge for us, I think, for the last few years, just managing client expectations in terms of what the scope of our work is going to be and how much we're able to take on. As you know, there's only so many hours in the day. So, you know, if there are eight of you working at full speed, you either have to say no to um, taking on new projects or you have to hire some more people. So, you know, it's sort of a, also a small business issue, not specific to this field. You know, you have to choose between, you know, growing slowly and smoothly or, or um, taking too much on and maybe, you know, overloading your system. 
Just a follow-up question, Anne-Marie. It's uh, fascinating what you said there about uh, web series being a, a challenge. Is that mostly due to you, you uh, unlike with um, dealing with television series, clients with television series or feature films, where you have a lot of more inexperienced uh, producers, and that's what partly sounds like. But is, is yes, that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And you know, people who are producing a feature, they don't go from zero to a hundred in a, in a month or two. I mean, they've got a lot of experience. They've been working in the field for a while. It's, mm-hmm. it's hard for me. Imagine a producer of a theatrical feature who hasn't seen a clearance report before. Um, right. You know, some, there are some, but, you know, it's, it's less likely. Web series production is, you know, like I said, the word bootstrap comes to mind. You know, people are you know, putting together things fast, putting together a crew fast, getting favors from a lot of friends. And then, you, you know, you're exposing them to, you know, insurance requirements. A lot of this um, comes from their getting into the nitty gritty of the insurance world. Like, oh my God, like, look at all these things I have to do. I've got to get this thing called a clearance report. I don't even know what this thing is. I certainly don't know how long it takes. And I definitely didn't budget for it. So Mm. those are some of the things that we come across and you have to figure out how to handle it. Like we've got some low budget approaches where, you know, there has to be a high level of experience of someone on the production end to go through the scripts and put together a list of selected items. Sometimes their lawyer will do that for them and send a list to us. Like, look, you know, they don't have enough money to pay for 15 clearance reports. We've pulled out the 15 names that we're most concerned about. Can you spend, you know, four or five hours doing the research and that we've already talked with the insurance folks and they're going to be fine with that report as coverage for their work. But they also have art department stuff that they're exposing themselves to, you know, if they don't have people experienced in set dressing and understanding about right. copyright issues, um, trademarks is, you know, there's just so many levels of things. Like for example, a few years ago, I remember being asked to um, help clear this New York film festival poster that was on a wall in a character's room. Well, there were three levels of copyright to the poster. There was the graphic designers copyright there was permission from the New York Film Festival to use their name and logo, but featured in the poster was a painting by David Hockney. So there's time involved in all those requests, but there's also a little bit of experience. Like if you're not familiar with the different, you know, with what copyright means and how that would protect different aspects of the same poster, then your art department people might miss some of that stuff. Right. So it's just, you know, it's kind of scary. <laughs> uh, so, Anne Marie, are there any horror stories that you can share with us? Well, fortunately, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> horror stories are usually very bad news. Um, one of the one of our huge frustrations, which can turn into a horror story, is delays. Delays in getting answers, and this is our number one challenge: is trying to get answers to sometimes fairly complex questions in a very short time frame. You know, if we're working on a 30 minute TV series, we're literally turning around a report to them every three business days. And these can be five, 10, 15 page reports. And on those reports are all kinds of outside sources who have to be contacted. For example, we're currently working on a show that has a lot of activity in the gymnastics world. So a lot of the characters are gymnasts, young gymnasts. We would want to check the names with the USA Gymnastics and Gymnastics Canada. So what happens when one of those organizations decides they don't want to answer our emails anymore? Mm. So for a television (laughs) series, you need to have an ongoing and friendly relationship with these people who are under no obligation to answer these questions for us. They're doing it as a favor. So, you know, we are having a situation with one of those sources who just stopped answering the emails. You know, it's also a tough time year to get answers from people. People are going on holidays. We've waited weeks to get answers and production can't wait weeks. Sometimes they can't even wait a few days. Television series production goes really quickly and we're in an era of a lot of block shooting. That stuff goes double quickly. So that's like sort of my personal horror story and it's nothing that I can control, which makes it even more frustrating. You know, people rely on us to get answers and sometimes we just can't get them. So in that case, what we do is we put together a list of all our attempts to get an answer. Here are the different emails I sent. Here's when I sent them. Here are the phone calls I made. Here are the messages I left. 
And that's our due diligence. And we have to send that to the lawyer and the lawyer decides, well, I don't know what we're going to do about this source. You know, it's some of these can be problematic um, Mm -hmm. and frustrating, frustrating for everyone. I mean, I remember back in the day when the U S invaded Iraq, this is like 15, 20 years ago, we had a producer breathing down our necks to get answers on a bunch of military character names in a story. U.S. Army people in a theatrical film we're working on, we couldn't get an answer out of the U.S. Uh, public affairs people because they were busy. Of course, <laughs> you know? yeah. they were kind of busy. But you know, when when you're on a set and you don't have your answer, it's nonetheless frustrating. Yeah. So these are those are personal horror stories to me. I can't really tell you of any horror stories where you know we completely mess something up and something could never be shown on TV again because, you know, touch wood, fortunately that's never happened. But the horror stories for me are the ones of frustration where we can't get an answer at the speed that we need it. Emery, I I can't say enough about how, uh, how how much it's it's been a pleasure working with uh, Eastern script and your staff. Uh, I, we've, of course, we've known each other for, I think a few years now, right? Yes. Probably three, four years, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's been a while. It feels like, like longer, though. I feel like I've known you for a while, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we uh, uh, corresponded on, on other issues that we're trying to make changes, um, certain changes to, uh, to, to the industry. And again, I say it's been a pleasure working with you on, on that aspect and on uh, with mutual clients. So I'd like to thank you very much for agreeing to do this interview. Anne-Marie, how can people find you? Um, uh, let's start with your uh, Eastern Scripts websites. Yes, we have a website. We've had it for a very long time, easternscript.com. Mm-hmm. And if you go to that website, there's a lot of information. There are also order forms. There are email addresses for contacting the main place um, to send your inquiries, which is a dedicated mailbox for pretty much all incoming work, and it's incoming at easternscript.com. And you can always give us a call, 844 844- 842-3999. Those are the best ways to find us. Excellent. And uh, on social media, are you guys on uh, any of the social media uh, platforms? Yes, we're on Twitter. Okay. And that's Eastern at Script. Eastern Script? Yes. We will post that all in the show notes. Other than that, I'd like to say thank you again, Anne-Marie, and uh, we will hopefully meet you in person one day. Yeah. I would look forward to that. Thank you both, too. One of your questions was what what – what's the great thing about my job? And I have to say the number one great thing is the people that I work with. It's great to meet people like you and the, the staff here. We have a really good time. <laughs> we, we talk all day. We compare notes. We're in different offices, but um, just having that connection with people. I mean, I, I'm lucky that I found a job that I love to do, but to be able to do it with people that you really like and work for people who you enjoy, that's, that's a gift. So thanks to you both. Legal Cup Pro has been produced by Craig Pang and Michelle Molyneux. Excerpts of Just Say Go, Dr. Octavo Mendicity Mix, courtesy of Dr. Octavo and Michelle Molyneux. This podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only. Nothing stated on it is to be construed as legal advice. The views expressed by the hosts of Legal Cup Pro and any guests are their own and do not represent the opinions of any organization or other person unless otherwise stated. Intro sound clip film projector countdown has been truncated from its original form and is copyright 2013 Ivan Gabovich used under Creative Commons BY3 license. Outro sound clip film projector reel runs out by Stefan021 under Creative Commons CC0 1.0 license. Mm-hmm.